concept is being undone through all of this. And the self-concept is a, a separate self, an individual personality that thinks it knows who it is and how to live its life and how to do things in this world to maintain its own survival. And coming together in this purpose where two or more are gathered, here I am, just that, and the simplicity, it doesn't even have to be in the words, like you were describing, Linda, it's just coming together with the desire or the willingness to join in spirit is what it's for. And the self-concept is what's getting under, and that is what we're not listening to, what we're not asking for. So even when it comes to joining around specifics, it, it ends up feeling so vibrational. You can feel when, some, when someone or some is speaking from opinion and base and past knowledge versus, oh, that's the spirit. I can feel it. And you can feel the difference of even where it's coming from. And that self-concept is afraid of being undone. There's a fear of giving way to the spirit. So that's where the projects come in to, to where the resistance comes up. And we know that the resistance is going to come up through the projects too. So it's no surprise when a computer shuts down you know, in the middle of a project. But rather than saying, oh, what's wrong with the computer? We say, oh, how's your mind? <laughs> it's a very different approach <laughs> to constantly bringing it back. back. So yeah, we're aware of it, like underneath all of it is this fear of God, like the fear of love, the fear of a separate self being undone. And so the purpose of coming together and joining in the spirit, knowing that there's this bottom-up healing that's taking place. We're not all saying, we're here to go for God, we all want to be in the light, we all want to be happy and joyful. Okay, can we be happy and joyful? Can we go? Can we go and be about our day? It's like, no, really, honestly. Where are we at? How do you feel? Is everything clear? Is everything flowing? If it's not, we stop. We pause. We pay attention. What's going on underneath? It's like we're very attentive to our heart, to our prayer, to our mind. Yeah, yeah it's like saying sh the Spirit just constantly show me, show me, show me. Because with that kind of very dedicated approach that Kirsten's describing, you know, it, it becomes more and more evident, more aware that everything that you perceive is a reflection of your mind. And so, um, just funny things have happened over the years. I remember in the Appalachian Mountains doing a, a gathering one time near Murphy, North Carolina, and um, I went to bed and slept through the night, but apparently there was huge lightning and thunderstorms during the night, which I was unaware of. Um, then the next morning, everybody was buzzing about how loud the crashes were of thunder and jumping, uh, you know, two feet out of the bed in the middle of the night because of this booming, crashing thunder and everything. I was just like, hmm, because I, I didn't even hear a thing. But uh, we had a long row of buildings, and then my friend Resta, who received all this music from the angels, she was the door open, she comes out, she goes, it was me! <laughs> because you just start to see everything. You don't see the weather is outside of you. You don't see anything. We've had things over the years, uh, issues with computers and internet network systems and cars and just everything imaginable. But instead of looking for the cause and the form, um, we, we go to the mind and and we've had some beautiful reflections too of that shift of mind where the, literally the problem in form disappears. You know, whatever was broken is fixed without calling a repairman or whatever. It's just, it's a oh, it's a miracle. There it is, it's there. Because it's, it's a whole new way of thinking. Instead of having something wrong with your car, taking it to a mechanic, you know, going to your inner mechanic, you know, the spirit. It starts to become a habit, and you start to, to do it with everything. So like Kirsten's saying, when there's a feeling that something's stuck or not flowing or whatever, then it's the time to, to go inward, back into that prayer and devotion. And to, know, to notice it, it's like, oh, I need to stop. In the world, in the past, you've just forced yourself.
his way through it and push your way through it. But it's now the attention is on attentiveness to our mind. Like this is not flowing. Okay, spirit, is there something for me? Is the healing or is communication needed? Help is obviously needed. But the help is always turning it back. And yeah, we're also just very attentive to that. Like when someone, a brand new volunteer, for example, coming into the ministry, we wouldn't necessarily put them in a position of being a webmaster where um, if resistance comes up, all of the web websites would accidentally be wiped out. Because that can happen. You know, like the resistance comes up in the mind. And things break. Things stop working as a reflection of the mind's fear of love or fear of God. So often someone will come in and it'll be starting with, okay, the kitchen. No. It's okay if the soup gets burnt. No, the guilt from the soup getting burnt is not as intense as accidentally you know, knocking out <laughs> an internet ministry. So the spirit's guidance also is meeting the mind you know, in a very loving way. And yeah, often when you and people come, like to come and, and offer your skills and abilities to be used. And the spirit uses skills and abilities um, in beautiful ways. But at the same time, the I know mind is being undone. And so the self that even has all of these past ways of doing things with some personal sense of pride or I know, like even I know how to cook, for example. Like that's going to get washed in the end. Because our goal is to be so done through by the Spirit that I am not cooking. So that self of thinking I know how to cook, I know exactly what I'm doing and how to do it, and there's like pride and control or knowing, which is in operation, all of that gets undone. And it's, it can be very humbling when that gets undone. You can end up feeling like you're losing your and your skills. So all of this washing is taking place at the same time, like stepping in and being able to use, and also there are times where it's just such an undoing for the mind, where things stop functioning. So the spirit's there, <laughs> lovingly guiding, you know, what's most helpful, what's most helpful. Step into this, now step out of that, step into this. But always through joining as well, there's a lot of support. And what's happening too is you, you lose the investment in outcomes. Like, for example, with all the traveling and touring we've done, there was a time when Jackie was, was handling flight, booking of flights, and frequent flyer miles, and so on and so forth. And now, from a linear perspective, you would think, okay, the task of booking a flight is you go on, you have to find the flight, and fill out all the information, and then finally you get to the button where you push the button and you actually pay for the flight and then it will give you sometimes a confirmation or you get this and that. And then you get to the point where you go through all that, Jackie pushes the button and nothing happens. Now, typically if you were looking at it in terms of a linear test of booking a flight, you would say, well, it all went good until the final step. And the ego could interpret that there's a there's a, a technical issue with the website or something like this. No, 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 no. At times, Jackie would just step back and go, I don't, I don't think that flight is to be booked. You see how different that is from being invested in the outcome to being so tuned in that, that, that all things work together for good and when things don't work, there, there's a, there's a a purpose underneath, but it's not that the site's not working. You know, it's being so open to be guided and then another flight will come in, would be better, or it's delayed until a time when a decision can be made. Perhaps it's just a timing issue, there wasn't quite time for that flight to be booked, so the button doesn't work, and so forth. So those are like nuances, and it, it actually goes reverse of a lot of ways of of thinking you can diagnose a problem in the world and then you go about the problem solving mechanisms that we've all been taught based on past learning. 
to remedy the problem. And we're learning from the Course that there's no problems in the world. The only problem is with your connection with the Spirit. And if you have an egoic block, those are getting washed away. That's the problem. It's an internal problem. As Jesus says in the workbook, one problem, one solution, salvation is accomplished. But he's not saying that the problem is outside of yourself. If you're defining the problems as outside, then you'll define the solutions outside. The only problem with that is it just keeps recurring. You've just got a daily, uh, just a litany of problems which you can try to solve them as best you can. Sometimes you have to move on to the next day. And there's carryovers from the previous day's problems, and you've got a pile of problems to deal with, and that's the human condition. And all of us, of course, have gone through that and dealt with that, but, but this is about inner listening and not trying to force outcomes. Just let the outcome be given. So you can see there's a, there's a very subtle point to be made in all that.